Jimmerism Total Memory Channel. Today on From the Depth we're going to build a little mortar. I'm going to build a little compact mortar thing that we can basically slap on builds. Uh, so let's get started. So we want to go into Crab Gannons and um, let us find these uh, connectors. Six-way connector. This is a nice little block we can connect up different pieces to. And we are going to try and make a kind of uh, compact little mortar here. So not really a big thing, <clears throat> just something you can slap on um, some chips and whatever you like. So we have a firing piece and we place it like that. And then we actually can remove these two blocks. If we just needed them to place it down. Right, so let's get some outloaders. I just like to use the manual ones, but uh, I don't know. The last times I tried, the automatic one seems to have been actually decent for a change. All right, so these little gates here with connections, these are the things we want to connect uh, ammo boxes and. Uh, and uh, yeah, these fragmentation high explosive stuff too. And basically what we want to have is we want to have, actually we should take these ones and just flip them like that, like that. Not sure we can use, utilize all of that, uh, but we want, of course, almost only explosive on a mortar. So here we have a lot of explosives and the amount of connections matters the most. So uh, now each of the boxes have two connections, which is nice. And now for a mortar, we would like to have a fusing box. So we put a fusing box on the, ammo, uh, on the uh, firing piece or a connector. We're going to set this as a low altitude fuse and select it to detona detonate five meters under the water. And it will be very nice. Now, we should indeed select where we're going to take that connection. Yeah. Now we want to make it a little meteor. So we're going to use the gauge increasers. And I think we can. Uh, I think we can use the gauge increasers here, perhaps there, like that, or maybe we should just see where we can put in some more uh, ammo boxes here too. Nice. That looks good. Then we can have one there and set up. Yes, this is probably very nice. So uh, how big should we make him is the question. Well, that kind of depends, but usually uh, I think we'd want to go with a gauge with around 1000. Uh, at least 1000, not smaller, because then it's going to be get very weak. Um, to get some kind of uh, power to punch through some materials and a little less chance to bounce off we're gonna add just a few hardener pellets and we put them on top here since they blow up less easily now we don't need enough we don't need a lot of ammo boxes actually but we do want a couple of them this will also speed up the reload time which is necessarily not something we want uh, but well we're just going to add four of them there, so it's not going to be substantial damage, but you can put them onto the six-way connector instead. Now this is going to be the output for our gauge increasers, like that. And the gauge increasers, they do actually have some um, armor. They're basically like metal, so you can actually use them as some kind of baseline protection. Now let's see, how big are we? 1,315 seconds reload time. That sounds pretty balanced and nice. Now we can throw in a few more explosive there because you can't have enough of them. 
And you can see if we just cut this away, then we'll get much smaller. Mm. Now, let's not do that. Let's just add some explosives there too, and we'll armor it up a little bit instead. There we go. And of course, this one can be just copy this by R so we get the same alignment and we do like this. Let's see how many we have here. We have four ammo boxes totally, uh, three hardening pellets. So let's have one more. Well, that should be our baseline setup of the motor. Uh, now we need some kind of this stuff. Motor driven barrel. If you put this on a spin block, you can actually use motor driven barrels and one elevation barrel as we do in normal turret. Uh, but since we have this as a fixed cannon, we only want motor driven barrels and barrels. You can use recoil suppression if the recoil is a problem, otherwise don't use it. Uh, because then it's less accurate. Right, and uh, you can see the muscle velocity here. And what, now what you really want to make sure is that you have around 50% barrels and 50% pivot barrels. This will make sure we have the 45 azimuth and 45 elevation firing arc, uh, which you can see in the description there. Uh, the longer this is, the higher the muscle velocity will be. And you can also see in the stats here, if we add a couple of more of them, we'll get more accurate. We'll get a better accuracy. But uh, we also don't want it too exposed, so we're going to make it a little bit balanced. Now, you probably want over 100 meters per second output speed, but if you get up to like, I don't know, maybe 160, then your shell starts to flying a little bit out into space. And that's not necessarily the best solution. Now, um, let us instead put a explosive there and a remove these and put hardener here. Because you see, we left this, uh, we left this space open here intentionally. Uh, because here we want a weapon controller. Uh, then we want to fail safe onto this. Whoops, remove the symmetry plane and put up a little wireless receiver so we can get a connection to the AI. Now you may want to say that uh, is it likely that this weapon will hit something that goes faster than 50 meters per second? No, it's kind of impossible. You can set up limitations if you don't want it to shoot at high altitude targets either. Well, one of the important stuff though, is we go back into the firing piece and here we can set cram settings. Whoops, set us to max by the way. Uh, and here we can set it to prefer high or only high. Then we make it a little bit more accurate, like maximum accuracy. All right, this should be a decent setup for our, our little mortar. And of course, um, it's a good idea to protect your builds. So we want to protect it close to the firing piece here. So we're just gonna add a few blocks there to protect it from incoming fire. It can still move around. We can add as many layers on top of this that we want, but one layer of metal is absolutely minimum. I think we'll do a little more. And of course, it is a good idea to cover it up so it's a little bit more sturdy. It's actually, a, yeah, you should probably coat the entire thing in, uh, in metal. But since we might want to save some costs on something, um, I think I'll do that on uh, when I actually spawn it in there. Uh, because I'm going to save this as a little prefab if it turns out to be a good weapon. Anyways, I'm going to cover this up here and I'll be back soon. All right, and here we have it. I'm going to save this as a prefab. And when I've saved it with a prefab, I'm going to spawn a bunch of them since mortars rarely work alone. And then we're going to spawn some test targets, basically. So see you soon. Here we go up to test. Oh God, that's close. 
Oh no. I think we'll need to do like this. Turn fire off from the marauder. Alright, now you see the first volley flying up in the sky there. We can do a little nice camera. And we have it tracking a little bit, but oh, that's a very bad hit there. Now it depends a little bit on your AI to target the targets and stuff, so yeah, that's that. But they do detonate four meters, uh, five meters underwater, so you can see when they do hit, it's kind of devastating. And when you have many of them, you of course can set up a little firing delay on them if you want to have a more constant stream of, uh, or a little bit more irregular stream of shells. Could be kind of cool. But well, it kind of moves it a little further each time, yeah? Let's spawn one a little further away. Let's just see this shell hit. Oh, yes. If that is not beautiful, then I don't know why. Beautiful mortars. All right, now we have some tiny more distance. Holy no, oh, that was a little too close for our console. We should as well, maybe we just turn on God mode for ourselves. Here, a oh lords, hope we don't seek ourselves. Here we can see them flying up in space and doing a little turn. And uh, this high up in space is not a problem, but if they fly too up, too high up in space, it might be a little problem. Lords. Close, but no cigar. And of course, um, they can shoot at quite a distance. You can see them tiny, tiny adjustments there, so they can kind of hit a little bit better. And the slower the target is, the better they'll be. The AI is of course also important dependent on how it is set up. Um, it will basically, you know, change the hit rate. Um, since it's trying to estimate, like here we can see, we have the IR receiver and the, and the radar hitting it there. But of course, it depends. Anyways, crabs are really cheap and ammo efficient, and they all look kind of big and badass. So, um, like most of the time, I feel that cram is the most most worthwhile uh, thing to use. That was a little explosion. Oh lords, shells incoming. Kind of homed in on the same trajectory, which is a catastrophical mess. Oh well. But that's that for you. Have fun building some crams. And um, I'll see you in future videos, I hope. Indeed. Of course, these are set up, they, they work a little bit better on a, a longer range. Um, I don't know how far away they are from each other, but like 2000 meters. It depends what kind of, what kind of mortar you make also, but yeah. Yes, sometimes I've tried to make some really slow cramps that like fire a shot each minute. Um, thing is that when you use cramps, you want you want slow reload speeds to get that firepower, but you also want some kind of fire rate. Uh, mortars don't hit each time either, so I don't know, 15 seconds is pretty solid, I think. But do have fun and try make some bigger mortars like 2000 millimeter mortars would be cool to see some effective of those if you do that make that you can post some in mention or discord or something anyways see you next time this is jimmy total notary channel signing out